Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, this is going to be episode three of four. Uh, in this episode, we're going to assemble the electronics uh, for the uh, Tronic CX5S. I'm still getting used to saying that. So, uh, as you see, I pretty much got uh, the main components here assembled, but I'll tell you what, let's jump to a time lapse where I assemble this. You can kind of watch how I put all this together real quick and then we'll come back here to the bench and talk about it. So let's go to a time lapse. Okay, welcome back. So, a couple different things I want to share with you guys uh, about this build. Uh, number one, in the instructions, it sort of shows a smaller, sorry, on this, this one, uh, a smaller um, shim going in here. These are the bigger shims where you have like, uh, what's it, eight, uh, about 14 of them. So, this is the larger shim that goes in here. The bolts go like this. Um, and so not the smaller ones. The smaller ones actually go into the main control board back here to stand it off. Um, and then the bolts go through and then you put two of these on here. I'm going to probably in the future maybe 3D print a shim that's that size and take these double ones off. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I mean they functionally serve the purpose and then although I don't think it showed it I put a washer on here to just kind of hold this uniform with the uh, uh, not holding it down because what happens then this assembly will go over top and it actually shows it with the fan down so uh, which is kind of a good idea I think everything will fit no it doesn't seem to fit so I'm gonna have to shim this up a little bit there is enough uh, it hits this uh, this screw here hits this transistor I might have to flip these around because um, it's hitting this um, but anyways the idea is is that it's going to draw air in and then exhaust it out here. So that's actually literally pretty cool. So I have to do some adjusting on this, I think. Um, because the screws fell out of this in shipping, so I put them back on. It wasn't clear which side went which way, uh, but I think I'm going to have to flip these around. So no big deal. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit is the uh, uh, Y and Z switch. So you can see here they go on opposite sides and they use these uh, small screws that you should get. Think about a number two screw and screw in here. Uh, I suggest putting this in uh, before you put the switch on just because it get, kind of gets in the way. And the idea is, is the uh, uh, gantry bumps against this switch, bed bumps against this switch, and obviously uses these T-nuts to go into the side. Now, while it's not part of the electronics, this is also your spool holder, if you're wondering, and this goes in the side, and it's just a big, I think, 5 16 bolt uh, to hold the spool. I'll probably come up with something in the future for this and, po and post it on Thingiverse. Um, again, we've got the back on here. We put the T-nuts in the power supply. Power supply goes in the back. And that's pretty much about it for the... Um, uh, uh, power supply. Pretty straightforward stuff. So, uh, you know, note that you do have, um, oh, I forgot to take the uh, plastic off this on the bottom. So you do have a switch and you do have your plug assembly down here. And this go on the back of the uh, printer. So everything's pretty much set. So far, knock on wood. Uh, so good. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this stuff, do a time lapse, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. I think probably one of the most time consuming pieces of any 3D printer build is uh, cleaning up the wiring. So tell you what, let's hit that time lapse and get this thing built. Welcome back. So we have all the electronics in place now. So through the time lapse, you've seen me assemble most of this, and uh, uh, I've spent most of my time though uh, off camera actually doing all the wire lacing here. And you see the control board here. 
One of the things that I discovered is you can see this section over here. Uh, kind of long story short, there wasn't enough cabling coming down from the top extruder uh, portion that to mount this bracket over here for the controller board, so I had to move it back. I'm going to probably be build some kind of extension bracket to give it a little bit more rigidity, but these two bolts down here seem to hold it just fine. So I've left the cover off because what will happen is the cover will go on here sort of like this. Um, and I'll put that on. It'll, it'll press down on some of this cabling because you kind of notice um, how I've got everything kind of laced through here. This is usually one of the biggest challenges of building your own printer is the wiring because you really get a lot of wiring like this. And one of the things that you've noticed that I've kind of kept clear of these heat sinks down here for the ramps. Um, so I don't have a problem with, with overheating because this is where you run into the most of the problems. There's also a couple of heat sinks up here for the bed and the extruder. Um, they do have a little bit of coverage, but I'm more so worried about the motors down here. Uh, one of the things probably in the future I will do is add another relay board over here for the bed, but I'll talk about that in a future episode. Uh, one of the other things I had to do other than move this back is I had to swap the X cable and extruder cable. Uh, because the um, uh, cables weren't, the X cable wasn't long enough to reach the other side over there. So I just simply swapped it and it was long enough. So I, I removed the labels. Everything else, as you can see, is pretty well labeled, goes together pretty good. No real big issues there. Again, it's just simply a matter of time trying to tidy up all the wiring and, and things like that. So that's the biggest piece. So now I've got all the wiring done. I've already fired this up and tested it out. Uh, no magic smoke, that's good. Uh, also be careful because one of the things I put a piece of heat shrink tubing over the hot wire here and before I button it up I'll take my heat gun, heat that up and, and let that collapse over the hot wire just to provide an extra layer of safety here for uh, any potential shorts in the future. Outside of that, again it's all pretty straightforward. Um, over here on this side I've got the controller board and again, I've uh, already fired this up before. I And this is probably one good point. Before I did all this zip stripping and everything, I tested out the electronics make sure to make sure everything worked, etc. before I went through all the hassles of uh, zip stripping everything down. So, um, and then I also used some of my own tubing here. It did come with quite a bit of, uh, if I reach over here, um, this stuff for, for lacing the wires, but I also use quite a bit of my own tubing because I, I like the looks of it. Uh, but everything else is pretty much stock and then used uh, a bunch of zip strips to kind of hold everything you're kind of seeing in the run here. So notice this. Now, one of the pieces, notice I angled the uh, edge or try to the of, the of the zip strip or cable tie over here. So this goes on the corner. So this is pulling, you know, uh, sort of semi straight down to hold these in same thing with down here so again i think this went together all pretty good electronically so now the next piece we're going to do is actually the last part and that is lace the belts and so we'll do that in the next episode so anyways hopefully you're finding this build interesting give it a thumbs up if you are don't forget the subscribe button uh again we'll have one more uh build video in this volume that's where we lace the belts and kind of tighten everything up and then the final episode will actually start printing with this bad boy. So again, swag shop up there. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe over there. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.